Welcome. <laughs> this will be an amazing session. Um, so, good day, everyone. So, our guest today is uh, Swami Tulsidas. He's uh, right now in the United States, in Almira, in an amazing temple that for sure you will share some story about this temple and about this, how this become possible, for sure, because I know him very well. Um, and this will be, I think it will be the most amazing Bhagavad Gita Express longer that we will do. <laughs> Just because one thing, like, we will not, we will not, um, we, will, we don't know, both of us, we don't know how to undercover this friendship that we have uh, discovered. Let me take the sound. The new talk. Okay, Swami so Tulsadas, uh, can you put yourself unmute yourself? Sorry. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Just to know that, just to share with you that um, if you feel that sometimes we we will go a little bit um, closer in a friendship and not only in the in the in the topic of the Gita is because. Um, I will start with this. Before you, you speak, Swami, I will just share this story that I think it's very, very clear uh, and it's very short. So one day, Guruji was on the table with us, uh, some of us, and Swami Tulsidas was not there in that day. And he starts to, to call uh, Tulsidas, Tulsidas, Tulsidas. And Tulsidas was not there, so nobody was looking to Guruji. And, uh, and in that moment, Swami Ravati just said, it's not Tulsidas, it's Sitaram. And Guruji just said, oh, okay, it's the same, it's the same. So <laughs> from that point, we call ourselves Senji. So welcome. I'm very, very happy to have you among us. I think it's amazing since 2015 that you, you were with us in the Advokri Yoga Retreat. It was amazing. So now the stage, it's yours. Thank you so much. Uh, pleasure. It's really nice to uh, be with everybody. Um, it's nice to see everyone. Uh, just a small thing is actually right now I'm not in Elmira. I'm in Long Beach, where Guruji will be inaugurating the Rupni Pandranga Temple um, in a couple weeks uh, when he comes here. So um, that's who they are. Thanks. Amazing. So, uh, how do you want to start, Cindy? So, even I don't know so much. <laughs> this is really different from the others. Okay, so let's start from the beginning, Swami. Um, we are here, you know that while I spoke with you, we are here to share a little bit about Bhagavad Gita, but most of all, the personal experience that each one of us has with the Gita, and how the Gita uh, help us in our journey, and how we support ourselves in the Gita, how can we connect some actions that we do in our life, in our daily basis life, and suddenly we remind, okay, this is what the Gita said, etc., etc. But before that, I think we have also new people here with us. Uh, if you can introduce yourself, like saying like uh, when you met Guruji, um, how it was, I think it's a good start also for the people that doesn't know you, that I think it's impossible to doesn't know you, but okay. Um, <laughs> um, my name is Swami Tulsidas. <laughs> Hello, take it um, I, I, I met Guruji in 2006 when he was in California, um, and I moved to Stephensoff, the first ashram in Germany, a few months later. Um, and uh, yeah, there wasn't so many people around that time, and um, it was like a really small place. And it, and it was very shocking that I expected him to have, like, Sri Pitanalaya, it's a big place, right? I expected uh, that ashram to be that big. I show up, um, obviously, like, I, I was 19 at the time. It was the first time I had traveled really by myself. And the, the taxi driver basically just, like, throws me out of the taxi, and he goes, Bhakti Marga, and he drives away. And it was just, like, a little house and I was in the middle of nowhere, and I was freaking out. I was like, what is going on? Um, <laughs> and, then, and then Swami Kanjalochana walked out, 
and he saw me and he goes, Fox and Mario? And I went, uh, yeah. And he goes, oh, come with me. And, um, and then he showed me the temple, saw Guruji. And, uh, yeah, that was really nice back then. It's nice now. So, and, um, he, when he first, um, taught Atma Kriya Yoga, it was, I don't know, maybe six months later, eight months later, something like that. Um, he, uh, he asked uh, me to teach the teachers. So we were, I was teaching like Swami Kuru and the others, um, which was a bit funny, like by me. And, um, yeah, I don't know what to say. I don't know. I don't know. It's embarrassing. I don't know what to say. I don't know. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I will complete. So from that point on, Swami Tulsidas is very connected also, was very connected also with the sadhana, with the yoga meditation arm uh, in our days uh, of Bhakti Marga. And uh, then suddenly he went, or not suddenly, but okay, uh, he went to United States where, um, where he helped with uh, an amazing team uh, to to build this this temple and to build this uh, ashram that uh, after so many so many adventures it's a good advice because we are in the process to to build our ashram also and of course we have a lot of adventures um let me know we can start it's nice uh, it was a flow process or it was like a back and forth process how it was the, this ashram uh, process in the United States, I think can be a good reference for us also. So, um, actually, we had an ashram before in Washington State, so that's like mm -hmm. north of California. Um, but it didn't work out, and it, and it it didn't work out for for many reasons, many good reasons it didn't work out. Uh, but one of the major reasons was. Um, seva was put above prayers, was put above like our time with the Lord. And pretty soon it just, the grace wasn't flowing. And so it finished. And with the place in Almira, with the big Naritsima, hope you all, you all have seen, I, you all need to come. It would be so nice. Oh my God, it's really amazing. Um, we, we all decided grabbed all the brahmacharis and were like, look, why are we here? We're here because we love Guruji and we love Narasimha. So number one is prayer. We must all be happy to pray. That's it. That's our one and only goal. After that, we must get along. We must respect each other. We must treat each other like adults, you know, respect one another. And then a seva. And everything was much, much more smooth. Because we put praying to the Lord, number one, respecting each other, and then the seva. Um, and of course, there was lots of obstacles, but, you know, I, I just would go to Narasimha, and I would say, hey, man, you're the one with 16 arms, not me. I have two arms, you have 16, so figure it out. You know, like many things, any obstacle, if it was big obstacle or small obstacle, I didn't really care. I'd go to him and I'd say, you sort it out, right? You, you have infinite ways to sort this out. I don't care which one of those you pick. You pick one of them. Okay, nice. You do your duty. We do our duty. How do you We're in this together. Not as a month. Okay. Okay. Good. You know, and, and he always, always did. Always, no, always did. Always does actually always sorts everything out. One example um, was uh, when we first started, we had, when we moved into the place, we didn't even have running water. And, um, and so we had the first few months, we didn't have running water. And um, finally, we got running water. And a couple of days later, it was Narsima Chaturdashi. In every single Narsima Chaturdashi, we do a 24-hour yagna. So we're doing a yagna for him. And um, maybe hour 18 or so, and I'm looking at that Simba, and, I, and I'm like, my God, like there is so much to do, so much. 
and my lord, you know it will cost a lot of money. If you wanted a business, Swami, you picked the wrong guy, okay? I, I don't know business. I don't know nothing. I just love you, my lord. Look, so that means you need to figure this out. I don't know. You have infinite ways. Figure it out because I don't know what to do, okay? Swaha, you know, just went on with the prayers. And all of a sudden, maybe 20 minutes later, my phone vibrates. I said, oh, what's that? And I look, and there's a message from a devotee saying, happy birthday to Narasimha. Jagger Dave Swamiji expects a check in the mail. Yeah, so it expects some money soon. Oh, okay, Jagger Dave. And when the, when the check arrives, I won't say how much, but I'll tell you, there's a lot. It was a lot. And, um, and the Lord takes care. The Lord takes <clears throat> care. If, if we put him first and we say, look, we're, we're not here for ourselves, my Lord. We're here because we love you. We love you, my Lord. So you need to figure this out too. You know, because the Lord wants to be with us also. You know, Rukuni Pandaranga wants to be with us also. It's not like we want to have the ashram, but, you know, the Lord doesn't care. No, the Lord cares. He says, I love you. I want to be with you also. So, you know, it's a, it's a teamwork with the Lord, you know. Um, go on, go on, go on. Actually, if I, if I speak yeah, yeah, too much yeah. or too fast, yeah. then you just tell me to shut up, you know. Yeah. Just be like, you shut up, speak. Swami, you stupid Swami. That's fine. <laughs> okay um and then one more time an another really nice story was the idea was uh, on the altars to have black granite on the altars and um and guruji gave his blessing he said yes do it I said okay um i call some companies and the company that gets back to me says okay no problem um fifty thousand dollars and I say, impossible. <laughs> I don't know what to say. We don't have $50,000 for the altar. Are you joking me? This is crazy. No, impossible. So I go to Narasimha and I say, look, if you want the granite, it's your altar, it's your temple, you figure it out, okay? I don't, whatever, your business. And, um, and then, like a couple weeks later, I'm calling some other companies, and no one calls me back except one company. And they were so excited. They were so happy. They were like, this is amazing. Yes, we want to do this. It was so cool. And I said, okay, I'm going to be honest. The last company said $50,000. We don't have a company. They went, yeah, it's probably, that's about right. Yeah, I think so. I went, ah, okay. He said, no, no, let me talk to my partner. We figure something out. Okay. Calls me back a week later for $22,000, everything. So more, like 60% less. Plus, they were really excited. The first company was not happy about it at all. This company was very happy, very excited. They gave me even better ideas than I thought of. And... Devotees. They became devotees. <laughs> and so the Lord will always find a way. He will always find a way. Have faith. Have faith. And I'm like, it will work. How can it not? When you put the Lord first and you say, Lord, this is your ashram, your temple, you figure it out. He will. And when you all are like that together, Smooth sailing. Yeah, and the, the perspective, um, and the point is that we can connect with the Gita, that is also a topic from us uh, for this session, is like like the, the chapter 18, verse 66, yeah? Sure. And the sloka is to go, abandoning all dharma, surrender to me alone, I will take care of all your sins, I will liberate you, have no fear. So this is, when you told me that story, because I remember that story when I did it on my uh, one year and a half ago, and we were also starting the process with the uh, with the ashram and so on, and you just shared that story that first is the prayers and it, it, 
we were so focused in the process and how to get the money and how to get to, uh, you know, like build up all the stuff and so on and the teams and the course. And when you told me, when you shared that story, I was like, well, that's, that's really what we need to do first. Yeah, we need also to work the other stuff, but the first and the main thing is the prayers because he will solve the question. And I think this is very connected with the end of the Gita, when he has to surrender even the dharmas. And I know you very well, uh, and and um, and you have so many duties, so many things, but uh, you always put Narasimha, you always put Tulsi first and then to take care of you and your duties. Yeah, well, I mean, how can I not? I mean, they're so sweet. <laughs> they're, they're the best thing in my life. But also, actually, one of my favorite verses, my favorite chapter is chapter mm -hmm. nine. Um, but I know. one of my favorite, have it one of my, oh yeah, nice, yes. One of my favorite verses is chapter, or verse 22, chapter nine. Uh, but then there are mm -hmm. those who adore me alone with undeviated concentration, for those who yearn for me in this way, I myself take charge of their prosperity and their welfare. And this is the point, like, how many times has Guruji said, we should not worry, we should not stress. A bhakta does not stress. So many times. Do I fully listen? Obviously not. Do I get stressed? Yes, I do. Do I worry? Yeah, I do. Guruji has said it himself, Krishna has given his promise, and when the Lord gives his promise, he always fulfills it. He never does not fulfill it. He always fulfills it. Okay? And Krishna says, when we love him, when we worship him, when we put him first in our life, he takes control of our prosperity and our welfare. Everything in our life works out. Actually, it works out better than we could ever imagine, actually. And, and whenever I forget that, I think about the temple in Amira. Or if I'm there, I walk into the temple and I look around. I think, my God, that temple is a thousand times more beautiful than I could have ever imagined. I don't know how it worked out. I really have no idea. I don't get it. The Lord took care. The Lord took care. And, and that this, this verse, we should truly place into our minds and our heart. So much of our life, we stress. We stress about family, we stress about friends, we stress about the job, we stress about the money, we stress about this, we stress about that. But if I love the Lord, he must, it is his duty, it is his duty to look after me, it is his duty to sort this stuff out. I remember, I remember that you are saying that, I remember when Guruji said that in chapter 4, when, when Krishna said that he um, incarnates to, to, to to put the Dharma and to, to because the, every time that the, the we have a Dharmic things, Krishna incarnates, but also Guruji said that the Lord also incarnates to have this love relationship with the devotees. That's the main thing. That's the main thing. Yeah, because we can make. Yeah, that is the main thing, because if, if the Lord is transcendental, and so for him, so what if we destroy the world? So what? Who cares? Whatever. So why would he come from Vaikuntha into the world? Only because he loves us. Only because he wants to remind us that he loves us. There's no other reason. You know, why, why do we do anything for one another? Because we love each other. That's why. And um, yeah, the more, the more we have faith in the Lord's love for us, the more the more everything flows. The simplicity of, of oh sorry. <laughs> no, the sim no no no. 
the simplicity of, of God is also um, a very difficult uh, thing for us to understand sometimes. Yeah, uh, I remember one time that you shared, you can share the story. When Gigi told you, told you that, <laughs> I love that story. I, one day I was uh, watching um, The Reluctant Saint. It's a saint movie about Giuseppe Corpettino. Uh, he's the flying saint. And a little bit about him, Saint Giuseppe, is that everyone thought he was mentally not well. Yeah, because he was just nice to everybody. He loved everybody. He was happy. Yeah, because he was always so happy, everyone thought he was crazy. Okay. And, um, but actually he wasn't crazy. He just loved Mother Mary so much. Anyways, I'm watching the movie. Guruji knocks on my door uh, to my room. Cool. So I open the door, take it in, Guruji. He goes, oh, what you doing? So, I'm, oh, I'm watching The Reluctant Saint. Ah, his favorite movie. And he runs in and, and jumps and sits on my bed, like, just waiting for me to hit the play button again. So I, I hit the play button and we watch the rest of the movie together. And Guruji turns to me and he says, tell me, why doesn't anyone understand God? I looked at him and I said, I don't know, you're the guru, you tell me. <laughs> you know, I don't know. <laughs> And he laughed and he said, because God is so simple. We make things complicated. It doesn't have to be complicated. If we put Rukmi Pandaringa uh, first, if we put Narasimha first, we put Krishna first, we put Rama first, whoever is your Devata, it doesn't matter. Put the Lord first, put the Guru first, put their love first. Everything works out in this life and in the next. And there's only one place we're going. It's like Quinta. Just put the Lord first. It really is that simple. I understand it's not so easy, but that's why we do our japa. We do our japa to make the mind simple. A simple mind doesn't mean that we are stupid. No. A simple mind means that we know our priorities. And the number one priority is love. Love the Lord, love the Guru, love yourself, love the people around you. This is number one priority. If that is there, everything works out. And then Guruji, he was leaving the room. He was about to walk out and he turns and goes, you know what? I think everybody's too stressed about being a saint. Yeah, it's true. Who cares? And he walks off. You know, like all the time we talk about how, oh, thank you so much. Uh, exactly, that that um, that movie that was in the chat right now. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we all like want to become saints. We all want to be perfect and all that. But honestly, who cares? You know, for raise your hand if you have children. Yeah. Cool. Nice. Okay. Good. So if you have children, then you know, right, right, Peter? You love your children no matter what, but doesn't mean you always agree. <laughs> doesn't mean you're always happy with them, isn't it? Yeah, of course, we all know that. Um, <laughs> I, I know that I'm not a parent. I think they are not happy also with the parents, for sure, always. That's true, that's true, <laughs> yes. Um, I think about my childhood and I, I feel bad for my father. I was not a good, I was not an easy kid, that's for sure. Um, yeah. But still, we love our children, isn't it? No matter what, we love them. And if we can love like that, then imagine how much they love. Do they always agree with what we do? No. But they love us no matter what, and they're always here for us. This is the point we need to remember. That the Lord loves everyone unconditionally. That's what I love. 
like I know that this conversation will go immediately for the bhakti and for the love. I know it. Yeah. I was as planning. I said, <laughs> no, no, <laughs> because you you are who you are, and I was planning to give this like the, in the second half. But that's the nice way. That's spontaneously and not according to the script. But also, I would like to to for you to give also your sharing uh, about what you think about some things in the first six chapters, because we can speak here, uh, and because I listened to your uh, Bhagavad Gita courses also, and first you said, one, when you were introducing the first course in the, or the first or one of the courses in the United States, uh, you said the Bhagavad Gita is a roadmap for the life journey, yeah? You are, we, we spoke about uh, Sharanagati almost, or to surrender ourselves or our mind or our will or our actions to the Lord now. We spoke about the faith, we spoke about the priority, and also the japa that we will go on, that we will go deeper a little bit for sure. But uh, what, why, why you said, why you are saying that the, the Bhagavad Gita can be the, the roadmap for our life journey? Because I think this is very, very good and very important. Well, the first six chapters very much explain how we should live like a, a, a human life. If we don't have a good human life, we can't be bhaktas. So understanding the foundation, you know, like karma yoga, right? Karma yoga is don't be attached to the fruits of your actions. Everyone in the world knows that. Everyone in the world knows that I can't uh, change the past. I don't know the future, so I might as well just be happy right now. Everyone knows that. And yet, it is very difficult to practice. And, and when we read the first six chapters, we see um, the fundamental truths of just how to be a human. Because karma yoga, to be clear, has nothing to do with God. It's agnostic, actually. It doesn't matter if there's a God or not God. Yeah. Um, and so how to live a good life. That's the first six chapters, and, it, and it's very important that we, that we know the first six chapters to understand the foundation of a human life. But then, upon that good human life, we build upon it and we take it to the next level as bhaktas, and we become divine. So, do we practice karma yoga? Kind of. We don't just say, whatever, I don't know the future, so whatever, I can't change the past, so whatever, okay? That's karma yoga for an American, whatever. All right, um, bhakti is, is saying, Lord, I can't change the past, so I give it to you. Lord, I don't know the future, so I give it to you, because you are the master of time. I give it to you. I don't just do things to make this world a good place. I do these things because I love you, my Lord. And that's bhakti. And if, and, and if you know, Guruji's amazing. What he does is he meets us and he awakens the bhakti, which is inherent in every... Is there a translation, by the way? Yeah, yeah, it is. It is. Am I, who, who's translating? Am I speaking too fast? In Surya. No, she's very good. She's used to. Yeah, okay. Oof. She's amazing. Okay. She's amazing. All right, good job, good job. If, Surya, if it is too much, then you need to tell me to shut up, okay? Just sh shut up. <laughs> so, okay, sorry. Okay. All right, good. Um, Bhakti is inherent in everybody. And of course, um, Guruji, because he is who he is, he can pull that bhakti out of anybody. But what happens is that bhakti comes out and and it's like we don't understand what's happening. We don't get it. It's just we love him. We love God all of a sudden. And that's why studying the first six chapters is important because it gives us that foundation to be able to understand what bhakti is built upon so that we can truly appreciate bhakti. Mm -hmm. And Swami, but also he, he gave the, um, the Krishna share the Dhyana Yoga 
uh, path also a little bit and then the, in, sometimes this create a little bit uh, confusion in the in the person who is reading the Gita like uh, and, and Arjun also shared this in the beginning of chapter three um, when he mixed a little bit about karma yoga and the duty renouncing the action or not uh, what what is your comments here in this point because some people can mix the the, the renunciation of action uh, thinking that I should not act in the world, yeah, my countrymen. Yes, 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 yes. I love it. Um, okay, so first off, okay, before I met Guruji, I loved crazy tapasya, okay? I wanted to sit and meditate for hours, okay? Literally, I would, you wouldn't see it now because I'm so fat, but I used to do four hours of hatha yoga every day. It's true. It's, I swear to God, I swear, Sayamji. I know you don't think so, but it's true. Okay. Um, and uh, <laughs> Peter Ram will, um, when I'm at his house, he will wake up and do Surya Namaskar and he'll say, you want to join me? And I'll say, maybe later. I'm going to go have my coffee. <laughs> yeah, but we went together. No, no, no. But we went together. But this time in India, sit around. Let's go 5 30 in the morning. Yeah, we go to oh, and the end, and, yeah, and that's the thing. That's the bhakti part. Okay, so he loves Sari Namaskar. I forced him to wake up at 5 30 in the morning to go to Vrindakund, Tulsi's place in Vrindavan. <laughs> so, so this is how we complement each other. <laughs> Anyways, okay, so before I met Guruji, I love this great tapasya, okay? Um, I, this gyanic way, like, I will do it by myself, I will burn my karma, I will meditate, I will have realization, okay, this type of mentality. But, Krishna talks about this in chapter 17, verse 19, he says, and the austerity practiced with foolishness, which tortures oneself, or inflicts harm to others, is considered tamasic. Um, and he speaks later, which verse, ah, it doesn't matter after he wrote verse, but he, um, he also says, uh, because he lives in our hearts, it doesn't make him happy. So mm -hmm. this yanic way where we, we, um, I'm sorry, I'm jumping ahead in very, um, simple terms. The, the jnanic way is neti neti, which means not this, not that. It means we are cutting away all of the things which um, are not eternal. Okay? So, uh, do you like pizza? Too bad. Bad. Wrong. Get rid of it. Um, uh, you, you you like music? Too bad. Wrong. Uh, oh, you like uh, Rukmini Pandaringa? Too bad. Damn. Wrong. Not good. Um, uh, do you, you have family that you love? Too bad. Wrong. Neti neti. Not this, not that. It is a, a very terrible path. It can get you there. But it's a very terrible path that destroys everything. That's not what bhakti is about, okay? And most of us, including me, I absolutely thought I let, I was a jnani. I am not a jnani. I'm actually quite stupid. I just love Narasimha. I just love Tulsi. And, and in the path of bhakti, it's an inclusive path, which means, what does Krishna say in the Gita? He says he is everywhere. He's in everything. He is the doer of all things. And so that means I can find him everywhere. If I like pizza, that's great. I should offer it to Rukmi Pandaringa. If, if I love my family, yeah, I should encourage them to love the Lord. Um, I love all of you. So we're here talking about the Gita and Guruji and Rukmi Pandaringa. This is an inclusive path. 
Because the Yannick path would be, well, this is a waste of time. Why should I speak to you? It doesn't make any sense. But here in Bhakti, we take our friendships and we offer them to God. And so you have to ask yourself, are you a person that is willing to eat the bare minimum food that is super bland, uh, just water, go live in a cave, have no connections with anybody, and do nothing except sit there and meditate? No bhajan, no puja, nothing. Is that what you want? I'm guessing the answer is no. So that means follow the bhakti path. The bhakti path is an inclusive path. Are you a, um, oh, uh, here's a cool story. I think his name was Kali Das. Um, he, he was married, he's a saint, right? Um, he was married and the, the father of his wife was a, was a rich merchant. And um, he saw that Kali Das was a bit crazy and didn't look after his, his daughter. So he said, okay, it's fine. I'll hire Kali Das. So he hires Kali Das and he says, Kali Das, all you need to do, very simple, is take care of the books, right? So, you know, all the addition, addition and subtraction, you know, all of the accounting, very simple, not complicated. <laughs> Time goes by, and pretty soon, the owner, the merchant, sees that he's making more and more and more money. He said, this is amazing. Like, I don't know what happened, but we're making lots of money now. Another worker walks by Kalidas, and he sees Kalidas working, but he looks at the books, and all he sees is Kali, 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 Kali. No books. No, no, not, no numbers. And he gets so angry. And he looks through all of the old accounting books. Not one number. Kali, 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 Books and books and books. He gets angry. He goes to the owner. And he says, you need to fire him. I don't care if he's your, uh, your son-in-law. He's terrible. Does nothing. And he shows him the books. And luckily, luckily the owner realized, oh, I started making money when he sat and started doing his Lakita. So I will pay him to sit and do Lakita. So that was his job for the rest of his life was Lakita Japa. Amazing, right? Why am I telling that story? Because I'm not saying do that, okay? No, you can do your accounting properly, huh? <laughs> But if you put the Lord first, if you bring him in to even your accounting, then, then how can you be attached to this world when everything you do is with the Lord and because of the Lord? How will you be attached to this world? Impossible. And that's, that's bhakti. It's incredible. How? You were saying, you were sharing that the first the first chapters goes more with the human side and how we can build up ourselves as a human uh, as a humans and to prepare ourselves to the body. So then you you share your story, your personal story, like your austerity, also in some way prepare yourself to go for this path in some way, even even if it is the opposite. Oh, you, and can, I'm not that. Sure, like, I don't want to do this. I want to go there. Yeah. So the experience also was useful, um, and the, in the end of the, the in the end or in the middle of the sixth chapter, the case, the moment that we highlighting the, the, the highlight of bhakti yoga starts to 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 wake up in the speech of, of Krishna, yeah, and when he said in the chapter in the in the verse thirty, for example, in the in the sixth chapter, for one who sees me everywhere and everything in me. I am not separate from him and he's never separate from me. So this is like a clear bomb in the in the middle of the um, of his speech. And it's amazing how he, how he starts to, to move all, uh, the Arjuna to this bhakti path and how to how he used to introduce himself uh, in that um, 
in that role or in that way? How can Arjuna can see Krishna in that way? Um, I think it's like you think Guruji do, do the same with us, like he gave us the, this experience immediately. You think he's helped us to build up as a human first, or he gives he give us the bhakti immediately. How you see, how you compare both speeches and Krishna in the Gita and Guruji uh, role, how to say? Well, we have to see that 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 Arjuna he himself was an expansion of Krishna. And so he could have the whole teaching of many lifetimes in a few hours, in 18 chapters, okay? Us, we go through each chapter over many, many lifetimes, okay? So, um, so of course, when Guruji sees us, he already knows where we're at in the chapters, okay? Say it like that. And so, of course, when he sees us, he's like, look, you've been Gyani many lifetimes. We don't need to talk about that. Let's go straight to the Bhakti, where you all, where you are already. You don't know it, but I know you. You're already there. Let me bring out the Bhakti. Of course, we have to do our part and in, in sort of remind ourselves through our effort, through study of the Gita and whatever, of the previous stuff, too. Will Guruji also help us to master our humanity? Yeah, he will. You know, because whenever we have big tests, we have to work on that also. But he he is looking at all of us and saying, look, if you are my devotees, you are not low-level people. You are already bhaktas. So why should I waste my time on all the other things? Let's just talk about bhakti. Um, What's interesting about the verse that you brought up, Sitaram, is that it is Vishishta Veda. It is the Lord is in everything and everything is in the Lord. That everything is the Lord himself. He is everywhere. And yet there appears to be separation. And this is what's so beautiful is how, how to be at that state of Vishishta Veda. There's only one answer in it and it's love. When we love the Lord, and I'm certain all of us here know this feeling, we'll sit in our prayers, or we'll sit in darshan, for example, and we feel we feel Guruji so much, isn't it? And yet he's sitting there in his chair, or yet he's on Zoom somewhere else, you know? But yet we feel him. Why do we feel him? Because there's this love connection between him and each one of us. So, so like, yeah, I don't know what to say. Uh, Gurudi, he, he, he goes right to the point because he sees us and he knows exactly where we're at. And if we're his devotees, then clearly we're bhaktas. He used to make fun of me and Swami Anushuya, actually. He would, he would go, why are all my devotees gyanis like these two? Like these two. <laughs> and, and, and I was like, What's bad about that? <laughs> but, but it's curious because, like, like when it, uh, I always connect one verse with you in the Gita, being honest, like the 1025 when he said, Among the sacrifices, I am the sacrifice of Japa. You know, because when, when we speak how to feel him and we can feel him in his presence, Guruji. But we can feel in him also through our sadhana, through our atma kriya yoga, etc. And that's that's I think sometimes we forget and to face atma kriya yoga as a love relationship with him. Yeah? And it's through japa also one of the main connections that you have with him. And Swami Tusi does. He can speak about japa during one week in a row, and I'm not exaggerating, <laughs> he can do it, because he's just sharing his love. But how you feel, how was your personal experience to feel so connected with the, with the Japa and the, with the name of it, or the name of God? Wow, that's a good question. 
I tell you, in the beginning, I wasn't so into Japa uh, at all, actually. Uh, I didn't like it much. And because, like I said, I had studied other stuff before I met Guruji, you know, and it was all like sit in silence, don't think, you know, it's a different style. Not speaking bad about it, I'm saying it's a different style. And so I found that the Japa, it would keep my mind going. And I couldn't feel the silence I liked so much. And so I, I did do much Japa. But then slowly, my understanding of Japa changed and, and realized that I was wrong. I was approaching Japa wrong. I was approaching Japa from a jnanic perspective. But jnanis don't do Japa for what? We do Japa because the name of the Lord is the Lord himself. And, and like we were speaking before, is that the bhakti path is all-inclusive. So what we say is, okay, if I have eyes, right? So let me offer this, my sight to God. How? Well, by looking at the beautiful mortis, right? Um, how do I offer my, my sense of smell? Beautiful incense, beautiful perfume offered to the Lord. How do I offer my taste? Beautiful pizza to the Lord, <laughs> or peanut butter <laughs> to the Lord. Okay. No, um, no, wait, 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 wait. One day I was offering a good bread, Portuguese bread, to Swami Tulsidas. In Bhaktivedas, yes. good uh, Swami Tulsidas was in our place and during a few days, and we spent a nice time playing Uno. That Swami Tulsidas learned how to say, can you say it? Ben Podra. Ben Podra. Podra. <laughs> ben Podra was the, the main expression when we were losing in the, in the Uno game. And then we offered him like a good Portuguese bread. And he just asked, I will say the name in Portuguese because people will understand. And he just asked Pan Rico, that American bread, like disgusting. And he was putting the peanut butter so, so much peanut butter in Pan Rico. <laughs> it was bang food. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Oh, <laughs> uh, yes. So, um, <laughs> all right, okay, wait, so we offer our taste <laughs> to the Lord by offering him food we like, okay? So how do I offer my, my ears to the Lord? By chanting his name. How do I offer my feeling to the Lord? By feeling his presence and his love. And so when I'm doing japa, if I close my eyes, I visualize my devata, I visualize Guruji, chanting the name, I am, I'm using so much of my senses I'm hearing, I'm touching by feeling his his um his presence, his love. I'm offering my taste by enjoying the the, the sweetness of his name. Um, it's almost a hundred percent complete. And if I've offered some incense first, and my room is nice and smelling good, there you go. And and so Japa becomes this beautiful. Um, all-encompassing experience where in the end nothing exists except the Lord's love except Tulsi's love and yeah I, I, I specifically remember the day actually where something clicked I was sitting doing my prayers to Tulsi Narasimha and I was like, oh, they'll say, I love you. Not some, I love you. Whoa, this love that we feel, the love we feel, that is the Lord himself. So not only is, am I chanting their name, enjoying their name, praying to them outside, enjoying their beauty outside, but oh my God, this feeling that we have in the heart, that is already them. That's already the Lord. You know, we do we do so much sadhana thinking the Lord is so far away. 
but you, you feel it. Okay, everybody, close your eyes. Visualize Gurdjie or your Devata. You feel that love you have for them? That love is them. That love is them. How wonderful is that? When we chant their name, we're attuning to that love. The love is always there, but our mind goes crazy and we don't feel it. So that's why we chant. We chant so we can feel the love. We can put the mind in its place and attune to that love. Take your day. Take a deep breath. Genuinely, that is why I, I follow this path right there, that one meditation. Because, I don't know, it's love. Their love is amazing. That's, that's it. Mm. Okay. Um, that's nice. Thank you. Um, yeah, to be able to a little bit, I know that chapter nine is your favorite. It's, it's because chapter nine is like it's like a roadmap, even inside of the chapter, and it starts with the explanation of Bhakti saying that is a, a, a direct experience. Is, is, is easy to practice, is uh, to practice, um, then jumps for the sincerity, then jump for the cooperation that God will make with us, then for the sincerity that one of the verses of Guruji, favorite verses of Guruji, uh, but you also spoke and you used here with us now um, a few times the word inclusive, yeah? and this goes like I think this is amazing when Krishna said in the verse 32, I, I, I would like to, to let this verse also because it's connected with your speech here today also, that by surrendering to me, whatever their birth, race, sex or caste, even those whom society scorns will attain the supreme state. And this is Krishna 5,000 years ago, saying that except all of us as we truly are yeah i think all of us can uh, have those moments where we feel like that last one even society scorns i think all of us know that feeling where we feel like like the world has turned on us you know and in those moments we always know that God and Guru has not turned on us. Even if the whole world is against us, God and Guru is still standing there with us, supporting us. And yeah, it's a nice verse. Thank you. Yeah. And then in the end, you just shared the last verse. I shared this already. He was like, Guruji was in our place. And he just asked each one of us to take a um, Bhagavad Gita card. And we, I don't remember even which verses we took. And then we challenged Guruji to take also he himself a card. Yeah? And the verse that comes to him, <laughs> It was an instruction for us because it was the 34, 934. 
So we were trying to challenge him, and then he gave the instruction that focus our mind on me, be devoted to me, offer worship to me, bow down to me, engaging your mind in this way, holding me as the supreme goal, you will surely come to me. Well, going back that all of you are that Portugal, you're opening your ashram. Of course, what's the center of the ashram, the temple? And this verse is exactly why the temple is, is so important. Because when you walk into the temple, of course you're focused on the Lord. You can't be focused on anything else. So bam, you focus your mind on him. Very easy. Be devoted to him. The simple fact that you showed up to the temple shows you're devoted. So check. Worship me. That's what the temple is all about. It's worshiping the Lord. Is it through the puja? Is it through the kirtan? It's all about worshiping him. Check. Bow down to me. Well, we do that every time we, we enter the temple, right? Every time we leave. Multiple times in the puja, isn't it? Right? Check. Engage, engage your mind in this way, holding me as the supreme goal. So, Obviously, if we're going to the temple, we're bhaktas, we know the Lord is the supreme purpose of life, you will come to me. And so living in the ashram, near the ashram, going to the temple, you're, you are, are automatically fulfilling all of these checkboxes. And if we do that, because it's automatic in a temple, what does Krishna say? He gives his promise, you will come to me. And so how great is the ashram? How great is the temple? Just by being there, your place in Vaikuntha is assured. It's easy. <laughs> Just go and be happy. This is the greatest thing of the temple. I'm so excited for all of you. I'm so excited for Portugal. Like when, like when the, the, the ashram is there, it, it, it makes Vaikuntha, the doors of Vaikuntha open. It's amazing. It's remembered, I hope, uh, doesn't happen when uh, Ruchita share the initiation in Atmakri Yoga and during the course and then from Nathri, <laughs> Swami Kustiras just ask her, so you feel that you will explode after this initiation? It was amazing in that course that we started laughing so much, so much during so many hours. I think Lakshmi Kamalini Nazi was there, huh? <laughs> Swami, one hour. Oh my God, I'm so sorry, everybody. What a big waste of your time. No, it was amazing. <laughs> it was one hour passing, just a, just a quick way. Uh, I feel that we can be here hours and hours speaking and sharing. <laughs> Thank you so much to accept our invitation to be with us, to be with Portuguese people. It was so nice to have you here in 2015. I hope very, very soon you can visit us again. I would like that too, very, very much. And uh, Swami yeah. Sridhar just walked by. He said hello to everybody. He sends his, his pronouns. Oh, uh, you can come to the camera also to say hello to us. No, <laughs> he ran, <laughs> but he popped his head and he said, oh. he just left. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, anyways, okay. everybody, well, thank you so much, thank you to thank you. be thank with you. us, thank you. Thank you. I hope we can thank repeat you. this, thank you, thank you there, thank you there, thank you there, thank you, Thank you. Adi Om Prem Sabhu Sanchana Mahaprabhu Ki Jai
Thank you. Muito obrigado. Tchau, tchau. Beijinhos do Catar. Para toda a gente. Gratidão. Obrigado, obrigado. Uma boa noite. Gratidão.